Well, now let's turn to uh, Tom Farrell, who's uh, scratch building his total layout, which is getting beautiful so far. And uh, Tom, I will turn it over to you to hear what you're doing with uh, Kevin's product. Yeah, thank you, Kevin. And uh, it, I just want to say what a great product it is. I didn't realize Kevin was going to be on this evening, so this seems like a conspiracy. <laughs> but I work, worked on this all day. Well, not all day, but all afternoon trying to install a couple of his products. Let me just jump right in here. This is a photograph of my previous uh, rustic buff and old Gothic. This is the Main Street Olytic. Um, my, probably my favorite photograph. I always start these things off with a photograph of my previous layout, which was 15 years in the making and one day and taking it out. But the new rustic buff and old Gothic ON30 railroad will even be better. Um, I'm building this layout without any compromises. So as most of you have know already, for example, I switched to DCC and the old layout was analog and I'm using tortoise switch machines. And since I'm basically no compromises, I was trying to figure out just the best way to <clears throat> control those tortoise machines. And I had seen the Barrett Hill ads for several years and, uh, you know, looked at their website and um, it looked very interesting, this capacitive discharge switch. It's a touch switch. Um, so the first area that I'm going to use his product is this town of Red Rum. It's not sure if I'm going to keep that name or not. It's sort of a joke. But um, <clears throat> I'm going to put him, the ones I did this afternoon are in that red circle. I did this um, crossing, basically. And um, first thing I did is cut a little piece of masonite. Um, his mini cup touch toggles are uh, standalone capacitive discharge switches. They're, you simply have to drill a one inch hole and then uh, glue them with like a acrylic adhesive or uh, you don't need much to hold them in place. The other type of switch he has is uh, the type that go um, behind a uh, piece of glass for a control panel. So uh, I'll do that. Well, that could be a couple weeks away for me, but I plan on uh, doing the balance. Everything to the right will be on a control panel. The um, that crossover that's highlighted with the red circle, those will be just an individual uh, touch, mini cup touch toggles. Same with the um, the mining area right above the number two there, that little turnout, that'll just be an individual switch, an individual mini cup touch toggle and everything to the right will be uh, on a control panel using his other style of uh, switch called a touch toggle, mounts behind a piece of glass, which is kind of intriguing. So this is that uh, panel installed, if, Everybody recalls how I, uh, I have my fascia above and then I left this gap specifically to add things like touch toggles and universal panels from Digitrax. And I will put a blank out panel to cover up that uh, electronic, uh, the direct base he calls it. So let me just run through conceptually how this works. Um, <clears throat> This direct base is available in several outputs. That's the terminology. The outputs go, in my case, to tortoise switch machines. And you can buy, a, I don't have it memorized, but I purchased a four output and an eight output. I believe there's a two output. Basically the output means the number of tortoise machines you can uh, control with his, with his touch toggle. So this is an interface. Basically, I'll have a close up of this a uh, little later here, but um, 
and it'll all make sense. But basically everything gets hooked up to here, the power, the touch toggles and the tortoise machines. So this is your, and I guess that's why he calls it the direct base. Everything gets hooked up to here. And I'll explain what those plugins are to the right in a moment. I went ahead and I sprung for his terminal adapters that he was just talking about. These plug directly into the bottom of a tortoise machine. There's two versions, basically one for the older tortoise machines and one for the newer tortoise ma machines. I have the newer tortoise machines. You can solder the wires directly to the tortoise machine, but I like the idea of uh, the ability to unplug this from the tortoise machine in case I need to do a repair, it's not a science project. <clears throat> um, I did make one error today. If you look above there, that yellow and green wire, that's my 12 volt bus. I bought the adapter to plug in my own 12 volt um, voltage to this direct base. Um, Kevin does offer a, his own power supply that plugs in place of this adapter plug. But since I have a 12 volt bus running throughout my layout on its own transformer, um, I didn't elect to have his uh, independent power supply because I, I will have direct bases all over the layout and I don't, I don't want to plug in that, you know, I, kn I knew in advance I didn't want to plug in six or eight power supplies all over my 35 foot long layout. So I ran that, that bus above. And that bus is monitored by a 12 volt power supply. He does clearly mark on the direct base and on that adapter a plus or minus, which I noticed afterwards when I wired it backwards. <laughs> Luckily my uh, 12 volt uh, meter, these are those meters if you recall that I have on my uh, control panel, it was blinking, telling me that I had a problem somewhere and I wasn't getting any voltage. I immediately figured out that I had that reversed. So you do have to pay attention to plus or minus. Kevin's probably cringing at the moment. It is the only way you can let the smoke out is to connect, <laughs> is to connect the power backwards. <laughs> so, if you, so if you look at the close up here of his direct base, you'll see the, the adapter plug in the upper right he has it clearly marked plus or minus. My advice is to pay attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> and the input splitter, if you, my application is a crossing. And um, so I want to, I want one switch to control two turnouts. But as it turns out with tortoise machines, you don't necessarily need the splitter. I learned that talking directly to Kevin before the show, but, so I just wired uh, my two turnouts to the those blue terminals on the left. That's where your tortoise machines get hooked up. And um, this is the temporary uh, wiring, you know, just to see if everything works. Um, I'll neaten this up with wire ties and things, but. Uh, what you're seeing here is, I don't really need that adapter to the right, um, but I have it screwed in there, so I, I'm leaving it in place for now. But you can see I have two wires in each of the terminals off to the left. Those all go to the uh, two tortoise machines. I'm sure that all makes sense. Yeah. And the ribbon wire, that's what goes to the capacitive discharge switch, the, the mini cup touch toggle. Here's above the layout. There's the, to the left is the, uh, the switching gear. And to the right there is my uh, pop in and pop out uh, tortoise machine. Which I described a couple of weeks ago how I do those installations. This is the, uh, last slide of the program, but that's the basic installation. So you can see there's the two Pico turnouts. They're super glued to a piece of plywood. And then the tortoise machines are screwed to the base of the plywood. And then using uh, 
Barrett Hills terminal adapters. I've plugged them into the bottom of the tortoise machines. Then those 12 volt power wires go to the blue terminals on the direct base. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, the see the mini cup touch toggles light, lights up green or red, a single, single LED does two colors. I will of course paint that white, it's not glued or anything in there. And I'll put a blank out panel there that's removable for, for maintenance purposes, but that'll all look uh, spacecraft like when I'm done. And uh, uh, two things on the whole thing. I just wanna say how um, the quality of materials and the, uh, the engineering of it, it's virtually foolproof. Um, it goes together very rapidly. Um, I bought the, um, they're called three pin extension cables because, um, I bought a whole bunch of them. Uh, they, these ex extension cables go from the mini cup, mini cup touch toggle or the, uh, touch toggles to the base, just ex because what comes with the, the, with the switches, the, the capacitance switches is a very short wire. So my recommendation is understand where your base is going to go in relationship to your touch toggle and order the appropriate uh, extension cables. Um, very well engineered product that worked perfectly right out of the box. Exception, I had the two polarity reversed on the uh, power. Of course, that's not an issue, issue if you buy his power supply. Um, as I said, uh, I'm not going to have a control panel here because there's only two turnouts. And if you look in the upper right hand corner, you'll see the other turnout that will have its own standalone mini cup touch toggle. And then everything to the right, which I believe there's at least eight turnouts, they will be on a control panel. And I'll use his two light red green touch toggles. Uh, you know, I'll create a, some artwork. I'll put it in the back of a piece of glass, and then I'll glue his touch toggles in place and hopefully make a uh, control panel worthy of a spacecraft, you know, something really attractive, you know. Um, any questions, guys? I got one question for you, Tom. Yeah. Tell me about the name of your model railroad. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Well, um, the rustic buff and old Gothic is named for the two poorest grades of dimensional cut limestone. I was the fortunate to be the fortunate to be the CEO and president of the Indiana Limestone Company. It's the largest dimensional stone company in the world. We did icons like the Empire State Building, the Pentagon. 32 of the 50 state capitals, most universities east of the Mississippi, all those buildings you see in DC. So my little joke was to pick two pieces, you know, we had have all these names for the stone. It's like the Eskimos have 50 names for snow. Well, we must have 50 names for all the different types of limestone. And the two poorest, nearly garbage is rustic buff and old Gothic. It's nearly what we call overbird, nearly scrap. So that's that's my little private joke. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I think it's great. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so for much. having me again. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing both of you next week.